So welcome to this Helix webinar series. Today's session is on migration of tools for Helix containers. This is going to focus on the license conversion utility. Today with me presenting is Sanka. Um, he will introduce himself shortly. Just a couple of reminders for those that aren't familiar with uh, Zoom. We have the Q&A section at the bottom um, of your screen. If you have any questions during this presentation, which is going to be simulated um, for some of the demos, but the rest is live. Please put your questions into the Q&A and then we will have roughly around 15 or so minutes at the end where we'll take the questions live, but we will have panelists answering the questions during the presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sanka to introduce himself and get started. Over to you, Sanka. Greetings everyone, whether it is morning, afternoon or evening, depending upon your location. I'm Shankar Ainala from BMC Software, and I'm here to lead today's webinar on migration tools for Helix containers. Our focus today will be on the license conversion utility. Today, we'll guide you through migra migrating your current classic licenses to new simplified bundled licensing system. We will start by discussing how to assess your current classic licenses to understand their equivalency in the new bundle system. We will then demonstrate the license conversion utility. This tool helps you to evaluate your licenses before conversion. You will see how to generate a report on your current setup. After you have migrated initial data, you will need to convert the licenses. I will explain this step in more detail. Next, we will see another demonstration of license conversion utility, but this time in conversion mode. Here, we will actually convert your classic licenses to new bundle licenses. Finally, we will have time for any question and answers you may have about the license conversion utility. Let's get started. This model provides a way to assign single license to a user. That license provides access to applications assigned to each bundled as shown in the table. Users can be assigned one license from any one of the three bundles. Each bundle offers both fixed and concurrent license options providing flexibility based on the user needs and organization policies. In the classic licensing model, granting access to ER system incident problem and SRM requ required assigning four separate permissions. However, in the simplified bundle licensing model, you only need to assign BMC Helix ITSM service desk user license for this access. This graphic illustrates three user scenarios mapping classic licenses to bundle licenses. ER fixed, incident management fixed, problem management fixed, SRM fixed are mapped to service desk fixed. ER floating, change management floating, asset management floating, knowledge management floating are mapped to service op optimization floating. And similarly, the third one is ER fixed, incident management fixed, problem management fixed, change management fixed, SLM fixed are mapped to suite fixed. So here is the outlined high level process of converting from classic licensing model to bundle, bundle licensing model. In stage one, during planning, prior to data migration, initiate the license conversion utility in assessment, assessment mode and examine the generated Excel report. Subsequently, in the stage four migration phase, the following, uh, following the initial data transfer, execute the license conversion utility in conversion mode to convert all classic license to bundle licenses within the new Helix environment. Execute this utility conversion sorry uh, execute this utility in conversion mode after each subsequent data migration until go live so here are the high level steps to convert the classic license model to bundle license model 
first obtain the utility from EPD, then unpack the downloaded files, then during the planning stage of the project, execute the utility in assessment mode to analyze your current licenses, examine the assessment results, understand the recommended number of bundled licenses. In stage four of the project, following migration of data from old production to new production, you will run this utility uh, to transition the classic licenses to new bundled format. You can go to BMC support website, navigate to EPD site and select uh, product BMC innovation suite on-prem and choose the latest version. Then you can search for a keyword bundled, locate the relevant products, and you can download from the EPD. The extract, once you extract the utility, you will find these three files. The extracted zip file contain the following files. BMC bundle license report template X, X, XLS. This spreadsheet is used by the utility to consolidate user and license information into specific tab within the spreadsheet. Next jar file. So this is a actual utility used for assessing and converting licenses from classic to bundled. Next you have a readme text. This provides a detailed instruction how to use the utility. The bundle license utility dot log. So this is uh, created when you execute the utility. This will serve as a logging tool for the utility to record any error messages. Uh, before start executing utility, open the spreadsheet. Make sure that uh, enable editing is disabled before saving the spreadsheet to avoid any read write you know violations. This slide uh, is to discuss how to run the bundle license conversion utility in assessment mode. The first step is to run the utility. You can do this through command line interface, either using Windows command prompt or Unix shell. To execute the utility, you need to pass various parameters to the command. Verify Java JRE version 8 or higher. And uh, you need to pass certain parameters like server name, username, password, port, spread, spreadsheet name, and the parameter. So here we have three parameters. Uh, zero means report all the users. Uh, reports, uh, num if you pass parameter one, it ignore all the users with the read, license type read. If you pass two, it ignores all the users with license type read and do not have any specific permissions assigned. So for example, if I have like uh, um, 500K users in my system, uh, if you select, if you pass parameter zero, so it will retrieve all the users irrespective whether they have read license or write license or floating license or no license. If you choose one, it, re, you know, it ignore all the users with read li license type read. So our recommendation is two because th there might be other users with, with the viewer permissions. So the utility actually work on uh, users with fixed and floating license. Here is a sample command to execute along with the sample output. Upon successful execution of the license conversion utility, the data will be populated to the sheet and you can do your assessment. There are a couple of other tabs like summary and validation tab, uh, which shows the statistics of the information that, um, you know, based upon um, uh, the mapping sheet. So it will populate the information combining uh, mappings and raw data, and it will do a calculation. Um, before proceeding further, make sure that the you know the status is compliant. Um, <clears throat> so the last tab is mapping sheet. So this is uh, for internal purpose used for calculations. So don't alter this one. Let's move on to demonstration. 
In this video demonstration, we will explore how to conduct bundle license assessment using the license conversion utility. Initially, you will need to download the latest version of the utility from EPD. For this demo, I have already downloaded and extracted it. Inside the utility folder, you will see three key files. Bundled license report template spreadsheet, and you will have a utility jar file and readme.txt. Let's start examining BMC bundle license report template spreadsheet. This file comprises of four tabs raw data, summary, validation, and mappings. When the when the utility is executed, it will fetch the data from your current production environment and populate this raw data into this tab. It will fetch login ID, full name, current license, and recommended new license bundle mapping, and whether it is a BMC service account and few other parameters. So the readme file contains <clears throat> syntax instruction how to run the utility in two modes, assessment mode and conversion mode. So you will see the jar file, which is referred as the license conversion utility. Let's run this utility in SS mode. No outage window is necessary for this step as it is only read people data from your server and inputs into the spreadsheet making it suitable for execution during regular business hours you should run this utility from your dedicated tool servers that you had set up for your migration project with connectivity to your production server i'm using the utility server against a server with approximately 39,500 records in the people form. So in order to execute the utility, first I need to launch command shell. If you are using Linux, you can use shell prompt. So this command contains the jar file as a main parameter, then server name, username, password, port, and the reference to the spreadsheet with the fully qualified path. And here we are passing option two. Since the parameter two is passed, the utility will ignore all the users with license type equals read that do not have any special permissions assigned such as incident viewer, problem viewer, etc. So here my path to the file name is not proper or maybe name with the you know uh, issue with the file name let me fix that one so i fix the path to the file and let's see how it goes so it picked up the file um and now it started executing so as i mentioned in the beginning so i'm running this utility against 39,500 users, but uh, it picked up 10,286. The reason is it will ignore all read licenses and uh, you know any users that are not with licenses and so on. It's almost done. 
processing 9,000 out of 10,000. So now 10,000 out of 10,286. Okay, done. So now let's take a look at uh, um, the log file. So So the log file is empty. So that means there are no errors. Now let's look at the bundle license report spreadsheet. For the sake of privacy, I hide you know all the login name and full name of the users. So, so the utility, what it did is it you know read all the user information with the login id full name and the current licensing information recommended bundle license and few other parameters so now let's navigate to the summary tab so initially you will have all zeros because you know we have certain formulas that needs to be recalculated so in order to recalculate i you know you can double click on the cell and hit enter it will fetch the data or you can use alt control and f9 to recalculate all cells at same time so in this spreadsheet you will see number of existing licenses mapped to the suite or service desk or service optimization bundles so we would also recommend you to uh, filter this data to look at you know the profile status so here i'm going to uncheck enable and see you know how many obsolete or offline users are there so when i click that so i have like so approximately, yeah, around 200 plus records, you know, with the profile status is either offline or obsolete. So we would recommend you to review your data, go back to your production and you can, uh, consider releasing the fixer license from those users you can also review if there is any test data created for testing with fixer license um, as well uh, to release fixer licenses from those users as well once that is done you can run the assessment report again so once you clean up the existing users and fix the licenses if you rerun then you know the number might be changing so earlier it was around 1300 something and now you have you know 1214 users with the fixer license so you can also review floating license usage the floating usage ratio represents the concurrent license ratio based on what is configured in your system today compared to what was purchased bmc recommends having a ratio around 3 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 this may vary depends upon your business requirements so now let's proceed to the validation tab So right now the status shows as non-compliant. Uh, the reason is we, you need to plug in purchased licenses numbers into these cells. Now, for example, you purchased 1,214 suite licenses and one concurrent and 7,279 service desk and 30 service optimization so 
when you enter those values then it will show as comp compliant now for example instead of 1214 let's say you purchased 1200 licenses so it shows 14 required licenses so that means either you need to buy additional licenses or you need to go and release some of the users to make it compliant so for example if you go and fix licenses on your production then you need to rerun this report to get new numbers so we we will always recommend you to have you know higher number of licenses because you may keep adding more and more users for your business needs so now for example you bought 1300 pack so that means still you have 86 remaining and similarly let's say you bought five concurrent users and so on so the last tab is basically uh, contain information um, that is used to populate raw data in the tab one and also calculate licenses in the validation sheet as we discussed earlier so this is uh, specifically used as a reference information so you you no need to review anything in this you can just ignore this tab and uh, you should not be altering this tab because it will mess up the formulas in other tabs so this concludes end of assessment demo in this video so let's move on to the next section uh, post data migration license conversion having completed the license conversion assessment you now have an understanding of the number of bundled licenses needed you can procure this bundled license from bmc after deploying platform applications on your container environment and then proceed to uh, apply the bundle license to ER system server using add remove license form. Uh, before uh, uh, starting this step, ensure that you have migrated uh, customized objects to new system, reconcile them properly, and complete data migration. And you need to perform the following steps to apply the bundle license to your ER system server. So go to ER system administration console. Uh, then go to add remove licenses and add new and select the license pack and then add number of licenses that you purchased and click save and you will see a confirmation message and then you can keep adding various packs one by one. During uh, stage one of your project, you will perform installation and execution of the utility in assessment mode and you will review the assessment report and acquire necessary bundle licenses in stage 4 of the project you will initiate initial data migration from your current production server to new helix production server using the helix data manager tool after successful migration it is crucial to run the conversion utility in conversion mode conversion mode furthermore you will need to rerun this utility multiple times after subsequent each delta data migration until you go live you need to follow the same steps um, for sas or on-prem same thing same steps so for on-prem also it's the same in this section we will outline the steps to convert from the classic license model to bundle license model begin by adding licenses to new helix er system platform followed by running the con running the conversion utility in conversion mode and finally validate the license using the people form to ensure successful conversion uh, this is a sample syntax so only the difference between the you know assessment mode and conversion mode is you need to pass additional parameter apply to perform license conversion utility 
you need to sorry uh, to confirm license, license conversion go to ctm people form go to the login access table and verify the license type change to bundle and navigate to bundle license tab and view the corresponding added bundle license so now let's proceed to the demonstration in the stage 4 of your project once you have completed the initial data migration from your cur current production server to the new helix production environment you will proceed to execute the license conversion utility in the conversion mode to demonstrate to demonstrate this i have prepared a sample spreadsheet containing five users each configured with different license bundled packs during the assessment mode the utility will recommend bundle license bundle license type in column f and this and this same value is populated in column h if during your review if you decided to change the user to a different bundle license you can update it in column h the conversion utility will then read the values from column h after updating column h you can navigate to the validation tab adjust the licenses accordingly to ensure that the status show as compliant so for example uh, for this user let's say um, based upon the permission the utility recommended service desk bundle license pack now i want to change it to something else so you can change it to uh, you know for example um, service optimization concurrent license now if you go back to this one and if you refresh using control alter f9 it will automatically update the values here If for example i purchased a bundle pack of 5 for suite and service desk 5 this is 5 5 okay so now it, the status shows as compliant so we have to go and apply this license pack in the er system using the add remove license form To understand the functionality of the utility, let's begin by examining the people form and locating five users to review their current license information. So here you will notice that the license type is fixed. and the bundle license tab is empty for all of these users as well so we will revisit this information after running the utility so next let's navigate to add remove license form and add license bundle packs so go to system general add remove licenses so now i have to click on add new license type 2015 pricing model and service desk user license service desk concurrent user license you know service management suite optimization so these are the various packs available for itsm so let me go ahead and add packs of five license for each type.
remedy service optimization. Let's add file, save it. Add new. So now I have added bundle license for various packs. Now for this demonstration purpose, uh, so we have three service desk users um, to replicate some issues. For example, if I add only one license here, for example, okay. So let's run the utility, uh, see if we try to assign more than one user with this permission, what happens? So once you complete this task, we can move on to executing the license conversion utility in conversion mode. So for this demonstration, I'll be using this spreadsheet, bundle license report template by user dot XLS. So let me copy this command which I have already prepared. Control C. Okay, so the utility completed with some errors. So as we already expected, uh, we assigned less number of licenses. So that's the reason it, it gave an error saying that no additional application fixed license for this type remedy service desk. And also there is another type of error uh, which says uh, the site chosen either does not exist in the site form. So it looks like there is a foundation data. Uh, so in order to fix this one, so we need to go and fix the foundation data. And for this error, we need to go and fix the licenses. So let's go and do that. And also here it shows the name of the user that got failed. So let's say if you have like 10 users or maybe five users, if you are applying licenses, so it will show whichever user that got failed. So now let me go back to the add remove licenses. So now I will go ahead and add license pack five and save this. Okay. So now I can come back and I'll. So before that, let's go and review the people form. So I will just go ahead and refresh this one. So the discovery foundation is one of the user that got failed to assign the license type to bundle. Uh, the reason is because of the foundation data error. So the next one, the impact manager. So this got assigned bundle license and it also updated the license pack under the bundle license tab. So the next one, it applied the license bundled and you see the service management suite user license. And same thing here. So this one, it could not assign because we do not have enough licenses. So now let's go ahead and rerun the utility and see what happens. So simply just you can re-execute this since we have already added the licenses. OK, so now we ended up with only one error. Uh, we already know. Uh, sorry, um, this error is different. So it says invalid license, the same bundle license for different license type. So the reason here is so what happened is you know in the previous time um 
so it added the bundle license to this user but uh, you know it, when it is trying to apply the license type bundled it gave the error because of the foundation data so that's the reason it is giving a different type of error here so it says same bundle license for different license type service optimization so in order to fix that we can just go ahead and you know clean up this one remove bundle and just save it fine okay so okay so now bundle license is removed and license type is fixed so in order to fix this specific user we need to go and fix the foundation data for the site and then we have to rerun um, but if you look at this screen earlier you know we got two errors um, you know the user with su edward so now i don't see that error the reason is it it successfully applied the license let's go and review that one so here you see the username sue edward and you see the bundle light license type and you see the pack is added to this tab after running the utility in conversion mode review the log files uh, log files for any encountered errors below are the examples of potential errors so first error indicates an issue with site selection within the form it is likely due to either missing or incorrectly configured foundation data or people setting to resolve this we need to correct the foundation data related to the people and then rerun the conversion utility to ensure accurate processing the second error indicates that there are no enough available bundle licenses for the remedy service desk application to fix this we should either procure more bundle licenses or optimize the licensing structure by transitioning some of the users to read licenses if feasible the third error indicates that the user is already configured with a different type of bundle license to resolve this error remove the old bundle license from the people form and then rerun the utility thank you everyone uh, great questions can lead to even better solutions let's open the floor for question and answers Thank you, Sankar. Um, I am just going to give the opportunity for everyone to speak Bear with me. And I think, Morali, why we're doing that, um, can you take the first question you've put into the live from Sega? He was asking, how much time does it take for the utility to execute in assessment mode and in conversion mode, for example, if we had around 50,000 users? Sure, sure. Hi, everyone. Murli here. How are you? Um, yeah, so it, again, assessment mode, basically what it does is it basically queries. All it does is just gives a, it does a query and pulls in your, uh, your people data. That's all it does, right? So it's a single query. So uh, it, that should not take long at all. Uh, so once that is done during the conversion mode, it all it all depends on the on the uh, when you're running it, right? And who are, I mean, how busy is your servers and whatnot. But but typically it might it it can take between one hour to a few hours, right? I can't give some exact numbers because it all depends on the environment. And as I said, what what how busy your environment is. But yeah, so we have not yeah we have we have seen like uh, the maximum we have seen is like five hundred. Uh, thousand users uh, run for run for a customer and they had some errors too right so with all the errors it took them like 10 to 16 hours but then once we figured out the errors it didn't it basically ran for like two three hours so so it's it's not a tool which is going to take a lot of time but yeah so but again as i said that if there are errors and if there's uh, uh based on system systems performance and and uh, uh multi i mean what others are running on the system when you run it so that's basically uh it's going to contribute Ho hopefully that answers that Thanks, Morali. Um, Saga, do you want to come off mute? Does that answer your question? Um, you have the opportunity to speak to us now. That you can hear us. Hello. Great. 
Thank you for your question. We'll um, document it and we will be sending out the Q&A post event today as well for everyone. So if you do have questions, keep putting them in. Um, we'll also answer them live and we'll formulate those into the Q&A as well. Um, why we give everyone else the opportunity if they've got any questions. Morali, the next question that we had um, that you also wanted to answer live, it's come from mm -hmm. anonymous attendee, but it was I work with large agency that has more than 1.2 million users. This exceeds the row limit of Excel. How can I use the conversion utility? So okay, no, that's that's a good question. So typically what we have seen with such, such large numbers, most of uh, what, what we basically care about is a fixed and floating license. So I would like to maybe take it offline and check with them on those numbers, because as Shankar showed today, uh, when you use the option two in the, in the utility, what it's going to do is it's going to only worry about, it's going to only pick your non-read license users and stuff like that. So that way, your actual fixed and floating licenses, I'm not going to believe it's going to be in 1 million range, right? So so given that, hopefully that should work, right? But if, if they have any further questions, definitely they can reach out to Sam and we can definitely have a, an offline conversation with that customer. Great. So if the person that asked that question is still online, feel free to either come off mute or drop us a line separately. But hopefully that's um, answered your question as well. And thank you for that, too. OK, so moving on, Melanie. Hello. I know you were asking a few questions earlier. So the question that you had um, in the chat was we have licenses for APP and user licenses for incident management, RKM and FTS. What bundled license would be that converted to? So, Rashita, do you want to pick that question up? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. So, hi everyone. Uh, so, this service disk uh, will be perfect for this kind of scenario. So, it will depend like whether you want to have fixed or concurrent. But yeah, uh, the, uh, incident problem and RKM knowledge management. Uh, this uh, service management service disk suffice this use case. Great, Melanie, if you're still on, did you want to just confirm that that was uh, that answered your question, if you can hear us? Just checking if she's still there. Um, I think she might have dropped, but we'll get that answer to her. Thank you, Rashita. Um, so another question that came in, so this can go out to the panel unless anyone knows um, who could answer this. So we've got, is it still needed to assign application permission after having bundled license? So I'll open that up to the team. Yeah, so application permissions are role, role level stuff, right? So that's fine. So that's not an issue. So I believe you're asking Marley, about just the, uh, note in uh, the permissions on the people form, right? Adding like incident, uh, the role level permissions, correct? The role level, sorry, role permissions. Yeah, role, yeah. <laughs> so I just, exactly. just, just want mm -hmm. to add, uh, just want to add to Murli. So yeah, once bundle licenses are signed, this further role level application, like instant problem is not required. It will be taken care of by the bundle license. Thank you. Like suite and service desk. I can, and you can always reassign too, right? So once the conversion is done, like for example, if you're given someone a suite license, you want to give them a service just license, you can do that as well. That that's like how you handle it today with your class. Yes. That they, yeah, they can remove the existing bundle and then they have to add a new one. No, I'm saying from the people farm, from the people the farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah also... same person. Yeah, in the same person, for example, initially we gave service desk, but for this, uh, you know, let's say we want to give more permissions uh, to access other application, then if you want to give suite, then we can remove the existing service uh, desk bundle from the people form and then assign the new bundle license. Thank you. OK, um, we have uh, another question, actually, Melanie's follow on, Rashita. I can see you were typing into it. I don't know if you just want to um, respond back to that, because that was a kind of a joint question that she had earlier. Um, I saw you'd responded to Melanie. Yeah, so uh, Melanie, if the requirement is just uh, for the user is just to access incident uh, and problem and knowledge management, then service desk will suffice. But if the same user wants to access chain management and SLM, then uh, this user will need a suite license. Uh, does this answer your question, Melanie? Uh, 
Can you repeat that, please? So uh, I said that, uh, like, if a user's uh, the requirement is just to access incident module and problem module and knowledge management module, then a service uh, desk uh, bundled license is sufficient for the user. However, if the same user also has a requirement to access chain management module, then a service desk will not work. Then you have to go for a suite license. Uh, does this help? Dan, does that respond to your question? I know that Melanie said thank you, um, so I don't know if that's covered what you needed. Yes, thank you. Okay, wonderful, thanks. Um, okay, so back to the uh, Q&A, we have another question. Um, if I create new people record and added service desk bundled license, will this user access incident console without having a, uh, application permission incident user? Question to the team. Application permissions are different, so application permissions are still needed. So license is different from application permissions. Because application permissions let you access your what you can view on the flyout application flyout, right? So you still need those. Thanks, Morali. Um, I can see we've got a hand raised. Andreas, do you want to come off mute for a minute? Sure. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, just one thing which I mean fits in pretty well is that um, with the Felix uh, BMC raised the number of like bundled licenses we have by a lot. So we, so usually we always, we were always kind of struggling with, uh, with the license count, especially for the concurrent user pool uh and now with helix we got like we got like like out of the box applied like so many licenses on all the bundled licenses that we never actually run into any issues and and like we like we then we have our regular meetings with our customer success specialist where we just look at the uh, actually the actual license loose usage and like compare with what we paid and what we actually use and we never deal with those uh, sometimes like lengthy process process of having to buy more licenses and so on or like like we we can do that afterwards if we actually use that much more but it's not like we we uh, run out of license all the time i thought this might be might be an in, in, interesting tidbit for like on on like bundled licenses and uh, how this is currently handled by BMC that uh, customers are being given like pretty much unlimited licenses and you actually then check regularly if if you are still like paying enough. Sorry, if is your question like uh, even if you're out of compliance, we allow you that? I do not believe that's true. No, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but we, yeah, go ahead. No, Rishi. it's no, it, it was it, that there was no question. It was really just a comment like how mm -hmm. this is currently handled, and uh, there was no question. It's really just a comment on uh, how how it worked currently with with Felix and uh, how BMC improved the situation from before where it was always pretty tight and now with pretty much un endless licenses it is much better for us uh, like we ha always had issues with people not being able to work and now it's never the case anymore because we always have plenty of room to to wiggle okay. yeah we simplify the model so, yeah. for sure Absolutely. Yeah. So, go ahead Roshan. Uh, uh, yeah yeah, so Murli, I can understand uh, the point of view from where, where Andres is coming, and that's the reason we have done this change. That was the main reason, uh, like for doing this, and we are glad that it is helping you. And this is mostly related to Helix staff customers. Yeah, but we don't give unlimited licenses for sure. 
<laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's like we do uh, we do a compliance check. We keep a compliance check. But yeah, they do, uh, they do not like in case uh, they uh, they are reaching a limit. So it's not like they have to come and request the license and then wait for us to assign them licenses. There are licenses available for them to consume, but later on we do a compliance check that how much it is consumed. Yeah, and also using the dashboard, you can uh, review uh, 30 days rolling back uh, license usage as well. Rashita, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a while since managing customers, but these are the statement of capacity that gets sent out to customers. Is that right? Where they true correct. up their licenses that they've used? Yeah? Correct, Sam. Great, thank you. I remember those days of seeing it. And I know I had other customers experience seeing the improvement. It was much easier for them to know what they were using rather than getting into that panic mode of running out of licenses. So I'm glad. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding correct as well, just in case I get asked. Thanks, Andreas, for the tips anyway. Good to hear. Yeah, thank you. Um, Thank you. So just going back to the questions, I think, Marali, there's a flurry from um, one of the attendees that's asking a few questions. We had yeah, another one he, around source code. Is, is this possible? included? <laughs> yeah, if, if yeah, because there's a lot of questions you obviously yeah. have, it'd be really helpful to understand them. So if you're comfortable talking to us, um, if you could come off mute. Um, but I know the first question, it's more, it's less isolated than the others. It's just saying about the source code included in the jars or is it just class files? I don't know if we can answer that, but I'm going to defer that for later. Uh, we can come back on that. It is possible, is it possible, it is possible through application permissions to assign change user permission and user can access normally change application. It would make, it would have make sense if when user have service test but bundle license, it shouldn't forcefully not allow him to change. No, change and service test are two different applications. If you go to our history, how we, we used to uh, have a product, right? So incident problem are coupled, change is different, right? So yeah, you definitely need to. So if you look at our application model, if you go to add remote licenses today in your environment, you will see licenses specifically for applications for incident, problem, change, financial management and things like that, AR, shame to be, of course. So those are the license you will purchase. To support those license model, which where we came with role level, role permission. So the role permissions are basically incident. So within, even though you have the incident uh, permission, but, well, so you can decide whether you want to give the person incident viewer or incident admin or whatever, right? So there's different permissions you can give. So yeah, so uh, we, we did not change uh, which product we want to Pro, uh, ship licenses with no, we didn't change that. We just changed the the way of shipping the license model. That's all we changed. So, so if you have change, if you have to if you had purchased change licenses today in in your classic, you will have purchase in bundle too. But you don't have to specifically purchase a change license, but you're going to get a bundle where you will have other um, other licenses with you as well. So that's how it works. So that's what I answered. What's the other one from him? When a user have bundle license, service license, he's still able to assign application permissions to change an SLM. I don't think so. I don't think so. I need some more clarity on that. If we, yeah, if we can take it offline with that person. Yeah, but uh, if a user is assigned a service disk bundle license, then you won't be able to assign them a chain management. Model. Exactly, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's why I didn't Not understand. Possible. Exactly. So either you need to go for optimization, service optimization, that yep. will provide an access to change. Otherwise, the best option is to go for suite. That includes all the modules in IDSM. Yeah, I can answer the next one from Samo. The conversion uh, uh, is, I won't say, okay, if you ask me, it's mandatory, but it's highly recommended. The reason we say that is when you go to our cloud computing uh, with all our products and now, now we call it services, right? So anything, anything outside of ITSM, which, which you're going to be buying and building, like VHAM, ITOM, and your business workflows, everything comes with only bundle licenses, no more classic licenses. So it's, it's a transition. So the sooner you transition, the better. So if you're deciding for a project, that's why we, we put in a process that we want you to convert it, right? So you, we want you to do it before you go live. That's the highly recommended suggestion from BMC. That's why we're having this webinar as well.
Thanks, Marani. Samo, does that answer your question? Feel free to come off mute. Yep. Okay. Um, there's a couple of more questions. We have two actually, minutes. If you from... don't mind, I want to cover oh, one yeah. quickly because I wanted to make yeah, sure. Yeah, go that... for it. Yeah, let me share my screen if it's okay. Um, so let me know if you were able to see my screen. Just coming up. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Um, like it's your back back screen. No, no, it's the back no, screen. Okay, let me go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> You're able to see the slide deck now, right? Yeah, if you open it in full mode. Yeah, and in slideshow. Yeah, thank yeah. you. That now or no? Am I doing it right? Um, it was okay before. You're now on the other oh, okay. side. <laughs> it's showing in the recording. I know it's a no, challenge. I... Just it's correct now. Yeah, that. this is better. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So what I was trying to emphasize was uh, um, so yes, yeah, as, as Shankar was explaining, you do you do uh, again. This is SaaS uh, process, so you do basically uh, do your planning uh, for your uh, license assessment here. But again, when you're running it on stage four, when you're doing the conversion, you basically, if you look at here, the green lines here, so you have to do this first in a development environment. So we have different color coding. So you don't run in production, uh, the new production directly, just wanted to just to emphasize that. So you follow this process, right? And then uh, there's two processes, one for SaaS, and I'm going to show you the one for one from on prem deployment in the next few seconds. But so if follow this process, if you see line 14, the step 14 here, so you run it on there, right? And then when you see the, uh, um, when you're really going live, you can you can run the license conversion on prod after the final final migration, right? But again, if in on, on a size migration project, you do everything on a development staging server. So in development staging server is where you'll be doing all your work because that's the only environment for the project team which will be exposed for ad with admin access and read and write and everything uh, because the other environments are in cloud. So you will not get the access for, for doing your development work or data migration. So everything will be done on your development staging server. So your data migration, your Delta incremental runs, data, Delta data, whatever you call it, and, and that will all be done in dev and you'll be running the license conversion in dev, right? And during the go live, you will definitely be again doing it on dev and doing a DB restore. Uh, that's how that's going to work. For your on-premise um, uh, deployment and conversion. So there, if you see, uh, you will be running license conversion in, in, uh, in the dev and also you'll be able to run it on the production environment uh, because you will be practicing your deployment and your development work and data migration in dev, and then you'll be switching to QA for, for different stages and you'll be switching to prod on different stages. So when you're doing it on QA, you'll be, you can run it, the license conversion on QA directly and if you do the data migration there. So after you complete data migration in dev, and when you do data migration in, in, in prod, uh, then you can, you can run the conversion here. So I just wanted to mention that you don't run it directly on prod initially, but you'll be doing it in, in, in different stages. Just want to emphasize that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Marali. Um, we're now on the hour. I'd just say if anyone else has any further questions that they want to take offline to the team, feel free to reach out and we'll connect you. Um, thank you for those questions that come up. And thank you, Sanka, for presenting today and the panelists for being in the background if we needed any support. Um, hopefully you found this useful. We were, are working through a couple of other migration tool webinars. I don't know, Marali, if you just want to quickly do a recap of what we're going to start planning and uh, the dates will come out very soon. You should see them on the webinar page and then everything from today the I'll tool, be sending out tool, if it's not today, uh, yeah, the tomorrow. Webinar. Sorry, yeah, no, sorry. no, I was just about to hand over to you. Please go. <laughs> Thank you. So this tools webinar series, so we, we shipped like a few tools uh, in, in the last release, like we call it utility. So one is the license conversion which we covered today. And we also ship for any project uh, customers to use. Uh, we also ship something called a workflow migration utility, so which we will cover uh, in, 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 in the future webinar. And we'll cover that workflow migration utility and auto reconciliation plus the three reconciliation. So basically cover all three together in one webinar. And then uh, I think at some time in May, we are also going to be doing uh, 
uh, tools uh, webinar for DWP export import uh, utility. That's also part of your migration project. That's more for data migration. And, and then I think you know, there are a few more coming for the on-prem to SaaS migration webinars as well in some sometime in May.